Welcome to America Talks. Once again, we come to your living room to share one of the subjects that uh, has been in the hearts of many people as we contemplate the conflicts that we are facing as a nation, uh, not only in, in our own country, uh, as we've been uh, all unfortunately know, uh, at attacked and, and the, the, the threat of possible further attacks, as well as we are now participating in many ways around the world in serving other nations in helping them in a variety of ways. So the subject tonight, conscientious objectors and non-combatants in time of war. Is it possible for non-combatants to be patriotic in the exercise of their service to our nation? And so I'd like to invite you to participate in tonight and give us a call. Maybe some of you um, had that uh, particular uh, experience and uh, some of you may even have it today. Maybe you know someone that did, and so we'd like to invite you to give us a call and be a part of the panel. But let me introduce our panelists today as we begin, and uh, beginning to my right with our doctor. Right. My name is Richard Nicewanger. I'm a retired history professor from John Brown University. A pleasure, and our pastor? I'm Dick Shattuck, a Seventh Avenue pastor for about 35 years and in California, in Kansas, Arkansas, and a chaplain as well. Always good to have you, and then no, our no cowboy stuff tonight. <laughs> <Yeah. huh? laughs> Fall roundup coming up soon at, at Springtown Church, by the way. You're when is it? October 16th through 18th. Okay, you're failing us. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm, I'm Bob but Abrahamson, former mayor of Gentry, Arkansas, president of Raman Medical Distributing. And then our special guest today, Terry. Hi, I'm Terry Benedict. I'm a filmmaker out of uh, Los Angeles, California. Always uh, a pleasure to have guests, and particularly today as we going to be addressing some of these issues. Uh, because uh, many people uh, have uh, entertained the thought that, that perhaps non-combatants may, may try to be capping out in some measure to the duties uh, that, that uh, are placed upon them. And so we'd just like to, again, uh, today uh, invite our callers to participate in our discussion. Uh, when we think of medics, when we think of nurses, when we think of those who have and are providing tremendous service to, to our armed forces in a variety of ways besides carrying a weapon and, and engaging the enemy. Um, so what do you think? Uh, uh, we'd like to invite you to, to give us a call today. Um, one of the things that, that we also like to uh, visit today, and I'm sure that all of you uh, kept your eyes in the, in the news about who was going to be the governor of California. And uh, so the Terminator terminated with everything and he is now <laughs> the governor and so uh, of course as we can see he is uh, well received by of course at least those who voted for him but uh, 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 tremendous uh, uh, really uh, voting turnout uh, they say that this is one of the, the greatest now Dick you live in California what do you think about uh, uh, Schwarzenegger being the governor <laughs> Nothing surprises me in California when I look at it. I mean, it's just <laughs> totally amazing what can happen. But it, it is another example of, of that a person can come from even a, a, an immigrant, come to this country and actually become all the things he's done from the bodybuilder, the world's best, to number one actor and now governor of the state of California. That is tremendous. Yeah, that yes. makes the United States a great, great place to live. Yeah. Speaks for America. Terry, you, you, you come from there. You just came from there yesterday. Uh, what is the temperature in California, you think? I agree. I, I, I think that it's uh, nothing surprises anybody out there. Yeah. And uh, the political climate is such that that one never knows what's going to happen. And, and, uh, but I'll say this, you know, we can't say we took the lead because Minnesota beat us. Yeah. The punch right. with Jesse Ventura. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, of course, That's we got right. that Ronald Reagan, you know, which was a right. uh, tremendous actor. And, and yeah. look what happened to him. And uh, so, um, an amazing thing. I guess, I guess the, the, the real question that everybody is, is really asking and, and, and the challenge that, that this event has, has put us into is, is that are we going to be doing this recalling an elected official when we don't like him? And uh, is that good democracy or dangerous democracy? Well, I, I, think I, think. I heard today there's, there's 35 states have that, that ability to do that. I mean, they have that in their, their legislation. But... They said none has the, the, uh, uh, the, the setup that it was in California to make it as easy to do as it was in California. Right. Back in the early part of the uh, 20th century, the last century we have to say now, don't we? It's, it's hard to think <laughs> yeah, of it that way. Right. But, 
But uh, in I the preceding <laughs> century, uh, early in the century, we had the movement to uh, add the initiative, the referendum, and the recall to uh, state constitutions. And as you pointed out, 35 yeah. states have done this. But I believe only one state before has recalled a, a governor, South Dakota. So we haven't been doing this uh, very often. Whether this might start that process a little more often, I'm, I'm not sure. I kind of doubt it, but some are fearful of that. Uh, uh, one of the questions I had, uh, uh, Bob, I don't know if you uh, relate to this. Uh, I guess I'm not educated enough in this particular area, but what is the difference between an impeachment mm -hmm. and a recall? Because basically the, the out outcome is the same. The, the person that was elected is gone. Well, in the case of impeachment, he's impeached in the federal constitution for high crimes and misdemeanors, so he must have done something illegal or uh, highly offensive, but uh, in the case of a recall, I'm not sure there's any, is there any standard? I'm not Thank sure. I guess my question is, why was he reelected 11 months ago? I mean, if, if things were that bad, why all of a sudden is there a recall? Well, this and, and usually well, that just goes to show that it was politically, politically motivated. Uh, if it would, this was not a grassroots uh, recall. It was started by, the Repu by a Republican and financed by the Republicans, and then it caught on at that point, and certainly Gray Davis made some, some unfavorable moves, including tripling the car registration tax. I think that was, that was the, that that was the straw, wasn't it? That was really that the straw. And, and, everyone. and giving uh, illegal really. aliens uh, driver's licenses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So those two issues, I think, became uh, flashpoints yeah. for everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we'd like to invite our callers to participate in our discussion today, and that's one of the issues. Uh, there are other, ar other areas in the news today that, uh, uh, what do you think about what happened uh, last week with uh, um, Israel attacking Syria? I mean, that was a very yeah. unexpected and quite serious uh, at, you know, uh, attack, really, to uh, another sovereign nation. <coughs> um, I guess the question the bottom line question there is what was Syria doing having a terrorist training camp <coughs> is, is uh, Which you know we, we've known they've had it you know in the, in the past I mean we were sure they did um, now maybe it's been just been proven well and part of the other problem with that is is that because of our alliance with Israel what Israel does we're going to have to back up at some point and and we're being obligated when Israel makes moves like this unilaterally. We're being obligated for future action somewhere down the line. I guess this is one of the one of the things that Israel did say. You know, well, if 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 President Bush can come to Iraq to get rid of weapons of mass destruction for possible attacks on America, why couldn't we do the same thing and go to another nation that <coughs> we know is training terrorists to attack us? And so that is the the argument that that they play there. So that's a good point that you bring out there, right there. But uh, so we are, <coughs> in a variety of ways, uh, experiencing conflict, armed conflict, war, <coughs> and and the question again, how can a conscientious objector or a non-combatant uh, be patriotic and actively participate in? the protecting and the serving of our nation. And uh, we'd like to <coughs> uh, enter into the discussion today. Um, but uh, let's take a caller here that uh, is calling us from California. This is Pete calling from California. Pete, you are on the air. Good evening. Mr. Perderos, good evening. How are you? Good. You know, I've been following this uh, gubernatorial recall and re-election, as it turned out, uh, very closely. And couple things about California. I think California got so far in the hole morally um, with the homosexual agenda, um, with the movie industry having so much political power in Hollywood <coughs> and things of that nature that, uh, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, who feeds right into that and has been openly um, expressive how he is <coughs> sensitive to the homosexual agenda and sensitive towards the um, pro being pro-abortion, that um, it's it's not going to serve the Christian community all that well, even though he is a Republican, and, and uh, we certainly needed some Republican power in California um, after so many years of Democratic power. But um, um, I do agree that the Republicans did fund this awfully heavily because George Bush is going to desperately need California in the next election. Yeah. 